September, Fred Wright and his flatmate Ethan Hayter led the line for the men's Great Britain team at the UCI Road World Championships in Australia. Unfortunately, Great Britain wasn't able to get first place. Could because Padcock took a break. Regardless, Ethan Hayter still managed to finish in ninth place. So let's find out what it's like to live with the guy who finished ninth in the UCI Championship. Here's everything we know. First off, what's it like being housemates for them? For the most part, judging from their interview with the BBC, they both got a good housemate situation and seemed happy being housemates. But Fred mentions Ethan being somewhat lazy because he'd always leave things around in random places all over the house. But hey, what can you expect from a professional cyclist? He's probably tired after an extensive training session and doesn't have the strength to walk over to the shelf and put things there. We've all been there, and that too, without exercising as much as these two athletes. So we can only imagine how tired Ethan must get at times. But that doesn't explain why Ethan would want to touch everything when he has oily hands like Fred says he does. What's up with that, Ethan? It's probably one of Fred's pet peeves, and considering that he loves playing Call of Duty, he probably has a problem with Ethan making his controllers oily too. It seems like they're both pretty happy with being housemates. Next up, what was the UCI Road World Championship like for them? The British men's team put all their confidence in Fred Wright after Tom Pitcock withdrew from the championships because he was fatigued. On the other hand, Wright announced his contract renewal with Bahrain Victorious for three more years. Even though he didn't secure a position in the top 10 leaderboards, his housemate Ethan Hayter placed ninth, which isn't too bad. Hayter also proved his potential by winning the Tour de Pallone and being a force to be reckoned with at the World Championships. He's even enjoyed two years of success with INEOS Grenadiers. Moreover, he represented the team in the Time Trial Championship to win a shiny gold medal. But unfortunately, the time trials didn't go how Ethan had hoped. Ethan Hayter performed surprisingly well in the World Championships campaign, and with a strong first half of his solo time trial, all went according to plan, and the Brit was the quickest through the first time checkpoint of the day. Hayter was riding well and appeared composed because he was passing perfectly to win the first elite rainbow jersey of his career on the road. But with a little under 20 kilometers of the time trial left, things went south quickly. Moving on, what happened at the time trials? With an 18.6 kilometers left, TV cameras captured Hayter trying to pedal his bike's chains back because it came off inside his chain ring. If you've ever ridden a bike, you know how frustrating that can be. Because of this, Hayter was forced to switch bikes, which cost him 40 seconds on the clock and the chance to win the gold medal. After the incident, there were rumors that Hayter blamed the manufacturer, but if you've seen how humble the guy is, you know that he's not one of those people who play the blame game. So he shut down the rumors later. Regardless, Hayter believes that if he didn't have to change his bike, he would have won the time trial. This makes coming in fourth a hard pill to swallow, but coming in fourth, even after all that, is still impressive. Let's learn more about Hayter's championship prep. Hayter did a good job of getting over his setback and looking ahead to the road race, where he hoped to lead the Great Britain team, which he did, finishing ninth overall. Hayter's world championship training wasn't easy either, because he caught COVID-19 and had to leave the Vuelta on España early, but his performance in the time trial indicates he's back at 100%. Although Hayter agreed that the Great Britain squad would miss having a rider like Tom Pidcock because he was fatigued, he remained positive throughout and saw not having a famous rider as a positive. After a successful tour to France and a recent renewal that has left him extremely motivated to ride, Fred Wright, the second team leader and Ethan Hayter's housemate, was also in incredible form throughout the Vuelta on España. Now for Wright's performance. Wright had a solid season in 2022, finishing 7th of the Tour of Flanders in spring and earning 6 top 10 finishes on Grand Tour stages. Losing Pidcock just weeks before the championships was an obvious hit on the team's hopes of scoring the gold, but Wright was more than capable of filling that void. Tom Pidcock would have been one of the favorites for the men's road race, but the Tour de France stage winner and Olympic mountain biking champion cut his season short because of all the hard work he put in over the last two years. It was going to catch up to him eventually, but still, Fred has more potential than he's given credit for, based on how he has grown and raced during 2022. According to Fred Wright, a new golden era in cycling will bring another British champion in the Men's Road World Championship within the next 10 years. The Great Britain team was still strong even without Pidcock. Wright wasn't alone either, because he had Ben Turner, Jake Stewart, Ben Tulit, and Ethan Hayter, his housemate by his side. Not to mention, all the GB team members are old friends. The men Wright raced against as a junior, Tom, Jake, and Ethan, have all been close friends, and they all support one another. That's one of the biggest reasons why Wright thinks there will be a British world champion in the coming years. Wright gained a lot of experience in 2022, especially because he competed in the Tour de France and the Vuelta en España, taking on back-to-back -back Grand Tours for the first time in his career. Still, he admitted that the workload had taken a toll on him. He didn't even want to look at his bike while he spent a few days at his parents' house in London, between the Vuelta and his flight to Australia for the road race. Although Primoz Roglic, the two-time overall winner, blamed Wright for a crash that ended the Slovenian's race in a video released by Jumbo Visma. Wright ended the race being famous for other reasons. Wright lit up the Vuelta with an aggressive racing style that helped him finish second in the points classification. Let's look at Roglic's claims. A few people who saw the crash when Wright was racing in a sprint finish weren't able to pinpoint anything Wright did wrong 
as a response to Roglic's comments. While Wright acknowledged at the time that the accusations hurt him, he's now happy to look back on it as another lesson learned. At the time, Wright spent a sleepless night because he received many comments, but that was only because he was competing on a stage, not because he was a bad sport. Since the accident, Wright has become a target for meme creators because they jump at any opportunity to make fun of anything they can find. There was one meme where someone photoshopped Wright into the background after Floyton crashed in the mixed team trial to make it look like Wright did the dirty on Floyton, almost like the Randy Orton RKO meme. It was a weird and out of the blue kind of time for Wright. He's come across other situations like this, but the most important thing to him was that all the guys on the team the next day were very supportive and made sure he was all right. Last but not least, the CEO of British Cycling has stepped down. If you thought Pidcock taking a break was bad, the CEO of British Cycling has decided it's time to part ways after a shaky few years for the British national team. But is this what the team needs right now? Not. British Cycling has had a tough few weeks after his announcement on October 10th that Shell will serve as the official partner supporting Great Britain's cyclists and paracyclists. This decision is just the most recent in a series of controversial ones that British Cycling has announced. There was a lot of disappointment between British Cycling insiders and officials about the partnership, which received national media attention and Greenpeace's disapproval. That's not all. With about 145,000 members, British Cycling is also experiencing financial issues before the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris. Hopefully, Shell's contribution of between 1 and 1.5 million pounds will fix the financial problems British Cycling is facing. Who knows? Maybe this could be good for the Great Britain team in some shape or form. What do you think? Could it be a step in the right direction? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you liked the video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.